trying to be sexy and seventeen, baby. Sexy and seventeen. That's a that's a song by. Uh, that is a song by some of those people in the eighties. Seventies. The, the wild kids. Oh. Stray cats. Stray cats. Yeah. Anyway, this is Reblogger Talk Seventeen. Thanks for joining us as we go over uh, the previous week. I know two songs by them, but not that one. <laughs> Man, I'm losing rhythm now. Rock, rock this town, Stray Cat Strut, and then, I, then I'm really done. Sexy and 17. Uh, apparently. <laughs> I need Janet Jackson to get me back into my rhythm nation. Oh, I was trying to knock you out of your rhythm. I'm glad yeah. I did. So, well, fantastic. Why don't you have an opener then? Who got rhythm? <laughs> All right. Y'all are perfectly fine to just forget this one from here on, apparently. <laughs> Anyway, every week we try to take what we find is the most interesting, i.e. me, uh, most interesting parts of Mark Rosewater's Tumblr account, Blogatog, and represent them to you in Reblogatog. Yes. So a lot of these things are very neat, interesting insights into the design process, uh, insights into the thought processes of one of the kindest human beings that, that I've ever read so much material from. We're going to get to that in a little bit. I teased it in the last one if you watched it because we had to reshoot last week. So yeah, same somebody... clothes, third video. It's we're going. <laughs> we're doing it. So we're going to jump right in here. Yeah. So uh, I tried to. I've started trying to put like things together so we can hit yeah. them all at once. Hey, uh, Mark, how soon will we get the names of the sets after Zendikar Rising? like before or after the release of Zendikar. Uh, he says, if it follows the pattern of last year during the stream for Zendikar Rising. Yeah, that's when we got it last year. And the other thing, hey, Mark, with Comic-Con, PAX, and whatnot all being canceled, is there still going to be an announcement day this year? If so, can we know when that will be? He says, to the best of my knowledge, I think it's happening. This is Watsy, guys, so don't worry. They'll make an announcement they about will announce. their announcement they day. They will announce the announcement day. I'm just hoping. I really loved last year's announcement day that gave us a whole year. year. And then they filled out in between there. Right. But they gave us the premiere Your sets. Set. I like that. Well, you know what? I hope they stick with it. I really, as, as a retailer, right. I really loved it. Uh, two or three episodes ago on Reblog and Talk, we went over where he asked for feedback on whether people liked that last year whether they should do it again so hopefully he got some feedback and that actually influences what watsy decides to do because i think it was great last year to get all we, of it we just... are the enfranchised community so they have to take a little bit of grain of salt but that's who you would do it for is the enfranchised right. community mm. random joe on the street who doesn't even play magic or played it three times doesn't care when a new set comes no. out we do. We do. We do. I want to know where we're returning to and where we're going to new so I can speculate about that new Yes. Place. That's yes. what I want. Absolutely. The Phyrexians have to be there next year. Please. <laughs> if they're not, I just don't know what we're doing. <laughs> there better not be a nickel bolus or oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to rage rip up some Planeswalker cards. <laughs> All right. Is your market research fine scale enough to distinguish what exactly players liked about Ikoria? I have mixed feelings about the set. On the one hand, I did end up liking the setting, but on the other, I disliked so much of the experimental, experimental. that's in the quotation Fish. thing, <laughs> experimental aspects of the set. Godzilla, Companion, Mutate's exact implementation, cartoon art. Man, I comic. thought that was awesome. Comic book art. Comic book art. That's not cartoon art. <laughs> that I found myself <laughs> in the position of wanting a set I quite like to fail in order to send the message that regardless of flavor, the experiment with Ikoria was not okay. The market research digs pretty deep on what about the set players like and dislike. I, are we gonna, okay. What, they're, they're, see the orange? That means I know, more I know. Okay. I love Kamigawa. And I am sad to hear that because Ikoria sold well, we are likely... Uh, to return to a quarry, you mean. Right. It makes clear that the sales are the most important thing in returning, in the in returning, which sucks for a couple different reasons. I can't wait to hear them. Yeah, I mean, so you're telling me that a business is making decisions based on sales? In Kamigawa's case, <laughs> Mirrodin and its broken cards massively hurt the player base. 
hurt the competitive scene, and put Kamigawa into an impossible situation and having to compare power levels to that block. I know you think Kamigawa is mechanically the worst block slash set. In my opinion, it's Ikoria big time. <laughs> I, I, I put that in there. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he wrote that out. <laughs> he did write it out, but he didn't make it capitals. I, I did that. Uh, two things, says Mr. Rosewater. Sales are only one factor. Ikoria is also doing well in market research. Players generally like it. I did, big monsters. Number two, it's not as if sales represent some outside force. <laughs> sales is players enjoying the set enough to spend their money on it. I'm not sure why returning to a world that players have demonstrated they like is such a bad thing. I'm with you, Mark. I don't get it. I don't either. Hey, we love this this place. Let's go back. Oh, why would we go back there? Why would we? <laughs> that just doesn't that just doesn't compute. <sighs> and uh, one last comment on this avenue of thought. Hi, Mark. From the main tribes from the Kamigawa, Samurai Samurai are the only one that we can't really build a deck with. Yeah. On the other hand, ninjas have received a lot of support in the last couple of years. An amazing commander yeah, and a good number of new ninjas in Modern Horizons. How likely is it for Samurai to receive some support in the future? And this is one where he just throws it back. Yeah. Uh, would people like to see Samurai support? So I threw that in as part of that because we were on the Kamigawa thing. I, I think I think we would. <clears throat> I mean, we got to see Shrines in Core 21. If we're never going to go back to Kamigawa proper... Well, let's sprinkle in some Kamigawa aspects in our core sets and other stuff like that. Because, yeah, I think the original samurai out of Kamigawa with Bushido are still the only things to ever have Bushido. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm big on Bushido coming back. I, but samurai, I would like to see right. samurai support. If they could come up with another mechanic for samurai, perhaps, but that was a mechanic they were given. I just... <clears throat> yeah. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. I like the Korea as well. Uh, it was very experimental, but I, I don't. And what this first guy? He was. I, I don't know. He was a little, <laughs> little much. Little much. <laughs> yeah. Like, how dare you? Mutate's exact implementation. I don't even know what the heck he means by that. Mutate. He wanted it to work differently. I'm guessing. I think he probably. I'm just speculating. He wanted to add all the numbers up. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I'm sure that. I'm sure that's what he means. I mean, how? What else could you do with mutate? Or, or else he wanted to be able to kill a mutated creature so it can be mutated on. I, what else is there about mutate? I, I don't know. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think either one of those would have made it better. Mutate's implementation, I thought, was fairly simple because we were all worried it might be too complex. We got the cards in our hands, and it's really not that bad. No, I get it, you know? I thought it was a Except cool for mechanic. the corner cases and lots of things right. have corner cases. There, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's mutate on to a... You know, <laughs> planeswalker that became a creature, creature or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah something like that. It happened. All right. <laughs> I realize that it's too late for Jumpstart now, and it probably wouldn't work well for standard releases, but do your printers have the ability to print a complete pack of foil cards? In other words, one complete foil pack per booster box or something like that. That would have been quite something to open a complete pack of goblins, elves, etc., and it's entirely foil. So, I th gotcha. This this is the thing. There is a weight problem of randomized all foil packs. Mm -hmm. They weigh more. You could tell that it was all foil before it was open. So that's that's a reason not, not to do it. They can do all foil packs, I assume, because. But back during Alara, they did those all foil pro. Uh, oh yeah, premium you can you can, you can make all the cards foil, but you wouldn't done, want them. You wouldn't want them randomly divide, in there, right? I mean, I could see that being the a buy a box extra booster. Ooh, that would be put cool. a thirty seventh booster in there or something. Yeah, I don't know. That'd maybe. Be cool. Um, are there foils in Jumpstart? Do you actually no. know? There are no foils at no all. No foils. I'm I'm okay. still rolling here. Okay, I apologize. I just yeah, you you didn't prepare this week. All right, <laughs> small piece of feedback. I greatly enjoy collecting foils, so products like Jumpstart that don't include them are much less exciting to me. Aw. 
Jumpstart was us experimenting with printing technologies that we've never used before. Parallel foils literally weren't possible. Literally. literally. Not figuratively, not just, uh, literally. All right. Can we hear more about these new printing technologies in Jumpstart? The Jumpstart boosters are more complex to print than a normal booster. It has to do with technical printing things that I don't fully understand. <laughs> because I'm adding this part, not his job. Not his job. He designs cards, not printers. He does a lot of other stuff, but he doesn't <laughs> print the cards. Right. He knows that there's technology in there. Yeah. Is the new printing technology the ability to have set packs? Having wrapped randomized blocks that are sealed within the booster are doing a few new things. So again, this is not his area of expertise. So, but Jumpstart is giving us new, and they're getting new printing technology all the time, right. the ability to mix these packs in different ways. We just have to be patient, and we're going to get some fun things out of it. Yes, we will. <clears throat> Jumpstart is a really cool, fun thing to begin with that they did. Yeah. I mean, we've seen them playing with the printing technology over the last few years. Uh, I think M19 is where you really start seeing it when they put just one double-sided card in a set. They had really started messing with well, stuff they didn't Strahd, normally we got, do. In Astrod, we got double-sided cards, and, and we got a bonus rare in there because of the way they had. Right. Know, that was really the but the first experiment. Yeah, I know with them, uh, before M19, they'd said they wouldn't ever do double face cards unless they did a cycle of so many, and then they did just the one. And, yeah. you know, they started doing stuff like that. Because Nickel like, Bolas is worth right. it. Then they gave us Dominaria. They gave us Dominaria where they collated a legend in every pack or stuff like that. They yeah, we're getting cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple shout outs here. If White can exile in non land permanent, could we see exiling any permanent in Boros and Selesnia someday? Uh, and he just sets us straight. We yeah. put destroy or exile target permanent in black, green, and white, black. Yeah. Those are the colors that get to do that. Uh, Assassin's Trophy, Vindicate, those kind of cards. Destroy target. Vindicate still has one of my favorite texts. Destroy target permanent. <laughs> when you say that flavor shouldn't trump gameplay, it's how I feel with white exiling creatures. Exiling is mostly a better removal than destroying, so it's weird it can't destroy but can exile because of philosophy. This person's just straight up wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there is no difference in the color pie between what white can destroy or exile. Yeah, but white destroys a lot of stuff. They, they do exile more than most other colors, yeah. but they destroy a lot of stuff too. So, <laughs> somebody who made a Tumblr account just to say that probably. Probably. <laughs> All right. Hi, Mark. It's my birthday today. Can I get a trivia? A trivia. A trivia. Ooh. A trivia. Can uh -huh. I have a trivia, please? That's what I want for my next birthday, I want too. a trivia. <laughs> uh, on my favorite Planeswalker, Jace, or uh. my favorite mechanic, Infect. Thank you. Well, this person is just a joy. <laughs> yeah, Jason Infect. Huh? Jason Infect. It's, <laughs> it's a good time at this person's house. Uh, mm -hmm. Jace was one of the three Planeswalkers that were, were originally... Supposed to show up in Future Side, along with Liliana and Garrick. Garrick being the first Planeswalker ever designed. Yes. Just giving you a piece of tidbit there. <laughs> we couldn't get the design quite right, so we pushed the Planeswalkers back to Lorwyn, where we made a full cycle. Happy birthday. Hey, hi, hello. <laughs> How weird do you think Magic's worlds should get? <laughs> really? That's a pretty open question. <laughs> We want our worlds to be resonant and relatable. So there's some limits to how weird the world as a whole can get. Individual cards can get quite weird, though. That's true. <laughs> <clears throat> so weird cards, worlds. Yeah, they want to do. They want people to go. Ooh, and they don't want to be. They want people to be turned off by like that's just too far out there. Right. That, that uh, what's what's that uh, artist that couldn't put the noses in the right places and stuff. Van Gogh? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he didn't have an ear. That's yeah, not... no, no. Uh, uh, Dolly? Salvador Dolly? I don't know. There's more than one, so he's yeah. probably right. <laughs> anyway, we don't want worlds like that where people just look at it and go, I don't get it. <laughs> Too many people, you want most people to get it. So you <laughs> oh, are you talking about Drew Tucker? <laughs> oh, no. Drew Tucker art. I just never got Drew Tucker art. It was... <laughs> Too abstract for me. It is very abstract. There's a couple of those old pieces that are kind of cool, but yes, they are some very of them, abstract. But some of them were just like, 
Uh, okay. It's some blobs. <laughs> All right. I mentioned this in the previous episode. If you watched our re-recording of last week's episode, which we just did. Yep. That's why we're wearing the same clothes. Mm. <clears throat> so now that you've done tripling a few times. <laughs> two. Twice. They've done it two. Next Bloom Ancient. I, fiery I, Emancipation. I don't know if two is a few. I think you have to hit three. Three to be is a few. few. Two is a couple. Two is a couple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when will we get a card that quadruples something? You just can't quit asking for more and more, can you? <laughs> Let us spend some time tripling things. The secret to maximizing design space is taking our time exploring something before advancing. Let's see. Original Ravnica came out, what, 2005 or six, something like that? Mm -hmm. So we've spent almost 15 years doing doubling. Give it some time. Well, wait, wait, wait. well yeah, I guess just doubling. We never... Did Mana Flare just add an extra? It wasn't actually doubling, was it? Are you talking about old, mana? Well, yeah, I mean, that was like our first... Is mana flare like our first doubling effect period? Oh, it might be, but I was just thinking about doubling season. season. is where doubling became Same a thing. thing. Before and then, then, it, then just, it just it snowballed. Yeah, <laughs> are That's, we going to say something that said draw two cards is a double... Howling Mine is a doubling effect? No, but I mean... I mean it is. Unless you're already drawing two cards, <laughs> in which case you're just adding one, so it's a... It's a not a doubling effect. Right. Well, that's why I asked about Mana Flare. If it yeah, added an extra or if it doubled. Because some things will add an extra when it adds. I, I think it's add an additional. Okay. You have to get uh, Mana Reflection Shins. before you double, double. the okay. mana that something makes. I know stuff. That's why I asked. Mm. To what extent do the design teams interact with the MTG digital team when designing uh, or pitching Pitching mechanics? Uh, like, if the arena devs felt it was impossible to implement a particularly complex mechanic or card, would design alter the mechanic to make it digital compatible, or would it be more likely to be excluded from digital play? <clears throat> Here's our non-answer answer. Yeah, I was very to say, I bet. He gets very diplomatic. During vision design about midway through, I sit down with the online design teams to talk through our current mechanic suite. They listen and ask questions. <clears throat> they go investigate and then get back to me with their input and concerns. If there are major execution issues, that is where they get raised. We do make changes based on their feedback. So, yeah, if it's impossible to do digitally, it doesn't get made in paper. Right. I mean, that's just the answer, guys. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I still feel that there will come a time when we will make digital-only cards. I, I personally just do. Well, they did when they very first started Arena. There's like five of them or something. Yeah, right? yeah, and, and there's one that's a color pipe right now. Yeah. <laughs> because nobody because consult they, did, they didn't go through design. They didn't just, consult any just, actual just, card designers. I don't yeah. know who made them, but they just said, hey, let's make some cards for beginners to get. Why couldn't they use cards that exist? I don't know. Yeah. That's why, we're, why it's not our job. It's not our job, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see, make sure I haven't lost my place. All right, so we did those. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, hi, Mark. Both my friend and I got dice in our M21 pre-release kits that were from different sets. Mine was Theros Beyond Death, and his was Rivals of Ixalan. Are there not M21 dice, or is this a mix-up? Thanks for your time. <clears throat> he says, I'm not sure. Did anyone else get M21 dice? I can answer this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I have the answer. Um, because of... Printing issues, because of the C word, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some did get Theros and other dice in them. There are M21 dice. Right. We but got, they I, announced it. They, they made an announcement. But there are some out there that got them. Um, I, did, I didn't actually see the announcement, but I had seen people uh, last weekend uh, on Reddit. I saw multiple people post up pictures of Rivals of Ixalan pre-release dice in their packs. Yeah. And the, when I played pre-release, I had an M21 die, and I was like, <clears throat> I, I saw never saw in a press release from I saw, Moxie about I it. I saw where some people were actually excited because it was neat. It was like a little goodie in there. Yeah. But there are M21 dice, but there was a shortage of them <laughs> due to COVID, and voila. Can That's I just why. be honest? I'd rather have got something else other than an M21 dice. I just... I hate turning my die to 20 and it says 21. It just, <laughs> last year was the perfect year for the spin down. Now it just, <clears throat> 21, 19, what? 
All right, I just want to respond to the last question in an Odds and Ends article about Commanders. I don't like the Commander designs they are asking for more of. I know there are people that do like them, but can we please do them less often? There is a push in both directions, which means we'll do some. I'm, I'm in with this guy. I think they're designing too many legendary creatures. They are. Uh, they're just, it's too many. Too, just, there's just too many. It's too many. Just too many. Uh, I've got more commander decks than probably anybody else in town. And it, I've got too many. Yeah. And, you know, and there's just too many to build around. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's just, it's too many. I, I don't even know how else to put it. It's just too many. It's just too Slow many. Slow it down. Uh. <clears throat> we do not need a legendary creature that does every single thing that magic can do. No, we really uh, don't. It really takes away the specialness of the whole thing. That's my opinion. All right, we've got some... I'm not saying quit printing legendary creatures. No, 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 no. <laughs> There are some that need to be printed still. There's design no, 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 space that no, you guys no. haven't got to, but... But yeah. we don't need, like, 30 in every set. No. No. All right, we got some phasing stuff. <laughs> Y'all ready to talk about phasing? Let's talk about phasing. Let's talk about phasing. This is our last group thing here. With the phasing experiment, are we likely to finally see an oubliette reprint or even a functional reprint, maybe not in black? Seems like a fun O-ring variant for set which has access to phasing. This has been addressed before. We have stated that Oubliette is getting reprinted in 2020. Boom. I believe it's going to be in Commander Legends. There's not too many places left for it to be other than there. That or Double Masters, right? Or Double Masters, I suppose. Sure. Are the only two places left for it, yeah. Right. So, if you're not familiar, Teferi has phasing in Core 21. Right. They're experimenting with phasing in and phasing out not permanents that have it as a built-in ability really? that that makes them cheaper to cast right. or something but as uh, be able to do to something it's essentially like a blink effect a flicker of some kind that's not going to trigger it doesn't trigger etbs or ltbs yeah um so two questions about phasing first as of being in court 2021 where is it in the storm scale and two is there actually a chance we will see phasing a little more often in supplemental sets, assuming this is a one-shot deal for standard? Uh, they are experimenting with it maybe being deciduous, Ooh. which means they could use it any time they wanted to. I it see. wouldn't be in every set, right. like flying, which is evergreen, but it would be deciduous. I, I, I would see it almost like, yeah, it would, as on an instant or sorcery phase target creature and, you know, until next turn or whatever, phase target creature out, things <clears> like <throat> that I see coming. So much like me talking a couple weeks ago, this person remembers the stuff I remember. <laughs> I started playing Magic in 2007. This person, not me. I started way, way, before, way before that, yeah. <laughs> and my memory from reading the Magic website around that time was that R&D put phasing in the same category as banding, a horrendously complicated mechanic that could never come back. What led to the change in views on phasing's complexity, or was it actually not considered too complex to begin with? The thing we're interested in is phased, phased out. out. Yes. And it's basically flickering where creatures get to keep their stuff and not trigger... Entering or leaving the battlefield effects. Right. Thanks for jumping ahead, Alan. You already said all that part on the last one. Uh, apologize. <laughs> uh, just to be clear, what is the part of phasing that R&D is no longer interested in? Phasing back in seems like part of phasing out. Is there another part to phasing? We're not interested in the permanent keyword phasing, where an object continually phases in and out every turn. Right. That's the part they want to they get. They don't. Out. Yeah. Those Go were, back and look at some of that stuff. It was it was horrible on creatures because you cast it at summoning sickness. The next turn, when you could do something with it, it phased out, so you couldn't. Uh, there's a rare from back then called Teferi's Isle. That's a land that taps for two blue, but it has phasing and it comes into play tapped. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I'm just, it's, 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 it's bad. It's pretty bad. It's, pretty it's bad. bad. <laughs> okay, and then even though you're more interested in phases out than cards actually having phasing, 
I imagine this must move phasing down on the storm scale, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he never gives it. He, he doesn't give us a number in anything this week, but yes. Yeah. But we don't really need a number since they're trying to make it deciduous. Right. They're, they're looking at testing it. All right. We're down to some one shots now. When you say that next week you're talking about the future of magic, you're not going to tell us you're getting rid of paper magic, right? People keep yeah. harping on this, and he said this following things many times. Tabletop magic, what we call paper, yeah. <laughs> is healthy and thriving. It isn't going anywhere. No. It's... Maze, what we call corn. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. <clears throat> That's, that's an old commercial. I'm very old. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's like 70s, I think. Yeah, it's very old. Uh. Uh, hi, Mark. We've seen an uptick in shark cards recently with Aquaria and M21. Is this something that will continue? I love sharks, so I'd love to continue seeing more pop up. <laughs> I expect we'll continue to see the occasional shark. We, it's a newly supported tribe, kind of, I guess. Right. You know, well, we're we becoming had, one. We had some sharks way back in the day, didn't we? And then yeah, we some the, really bad ones. Like Ice Age and stuff, when they were doing all... They tried to do There's a, lot a of shark different. in the dark. Oh, yeah. Shark in the dark. <laughs> shark in the dark. Okay. <laughs> do you expect that eventually every single tribe will receive its own lord? Assuming magic continues for decades to come. We make new creature types faster than we make new lords, so I'm skeptical. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Where's our gremlin lord? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is Gizmo? <laughs> I want a Gizmo. All right? <laughs> I want a Gizmo. Heck of a commander, right? <laughs> yeah. You know it. Don't play it after midnight. <laughs> I'll be throwing water on that thing. <laughs> Triple sleeve. Uh, is there a card in 2021 that you think is a bend? Or in general, is the set firmly in the color pie? And as we talk about a yeah. lot, if you listen to a lot of these, Magic does bends every set, usually bending towards the theme of the set. Yeah. So one of the easiest ones to tell you about is when they did uh, Tarkir, and it was about dragons. Uh, green, which doesn't get flyers. Nope. We got some green dragons. We got a couple. So we bent so that green could participate in what the set was about. What is that? Devastator Dragon or blows Destructor? up Destructor? Destructor Dragon. Destructor Dragon is one of them. But yeah. uh -huh. <clears throat> so there's always some amount of bends. Right. Uh, with Keyword Matters creatures from Ikoria, Labyrinth Raptor, yeah. and Core 2021, but it Blight Fang, will we start to see keyword lords? I think like that'd be cool. Death touch death touch creatures you control have plus one plus one. Or perhaps a cavern of souls, but for keywords on creatures. Ooh. Mayro says it's not a great design space. Most keywords don't want you to fill your deck with them. That doesn't mean we won't ever make them make some that play well. So they could make some, but it's not really something they're looking to explore. Right. And I think he's mostly right. I mean, everybody's probably made a flying deck, but right. I don't think I've ever made a death touch deck or a trample deck or a, no but i i do a, find it to be very, i mean in fact okay in fact yeah <laughs> uh you know i do find it to be very i, th I think it's kind of interesting uh, when you're because we've done a lot of the other things so i mean targeting in on keywords like all death touch creatures get plus one plus one is completely new design phase whether it's not the most interesting but it's interesting for the fact that we don't have anything else like it it's it is, but I mean, it's going to get silly if you start doing certain things. It, yeah, know? no, I I agree. If you do certain all companion things. creatures get plus one plus one. Yeah, no, I I understand, but you know, some of the especially some of the evergreen mechanics, the evergreen keywords, doing some stuff with them, flying, death touch, first strike, you know, specifically. Yeah, I I drop one here or there, but I don't think you mine it all at once. No, I don't think with. so either. But I think it's something that you can continue to. Yeah. To do. Uh, speaking of Planeswalker flavor, with regard to loyalty counters, any chance we'll ever see Planeswalker removal flavored as making them disloyal or scared for their safety rather than killing them? As I understand it, they don't actually die when their loyalty goes to zero. Oh. Uh, and he says they flee the plane when they hit zero. And that's what they do. They, they Planeswalk. Hit zero, he goes away. 
You can cast another one, get him back. Right. Uh, I could imagine an enchant. <laughs> he says, enough, enough of, of this. this. Yeah. <laughs> I could imagine an enchantment that makes planeswalkers act differently. I'm not sure there's the space text wise on the planeswalker. Mm. Yeah, they're already pretty cramped a lot of times. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of room to put a lot of stuff on there. So, but we've seen we can get to about four abilities essentially, <clears throat> a static and three or four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think there's definitely space to mine enchantments. I've noticed a lot more mentions of Planeswalker in the core set and in yes. regular, not just War of the Spark, which had a ton. It of needed. Them. But I believe Core 21 had either five or ten more mentions of Planeswalkers on non-Planeswalker cards than Core 20 did, for yes, example. Yes, we brought that up so a couple weeks ago. There, that, that's happening. <clears throat> and, and if they, like we talked about a few weeks ago, if they're in discussion about doing something on emblems, we might start seeing that in the next couple of years. I, I feel like it's it has to happen eventually. It's design space that hasn't been touched at all. And I know they... I don't like the idea that in Magic, this game of strategy and skill where we try to do all these things, that there is just this one thing that is completely uninteractable in a game about interaction. That Planeswalker emblem, there is absolutely no way to interact with. So I feel like something is coming down eventually. I'm going to save that one for last. I thought you would. Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't Lifelink stack? <laughs> I understand why most keywords don't, but Lifelink is not stacking. Actually feels really unintuitive to me. Also, will unblockable ever be keyworded? Well, I know unblockable won't be keyworded. No. Be they use it in too many ways. ways. Yeah. Uh, Lifelink, it used to stack, but we didn't like it being the only evergreen keyword that stacked. So we changed it to not stack. There were a bunch of other reasons, too, and I forgot to look these up. But I know one reason Prowess didn't make it as an evergreen is because it stacks. Ah. And they don't want evergreen keywords to stack okay. because it, it makes it makes that keyword better. Yeah. Different than the other evergreens. That's, that's fair. Now, before Lifelink was a keyword, if you get one of those old cards that have the ability, that stacks with Lifelink. Yeah, there are a few of those. <laughs> there are a few of those. There are a few of those. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could give a quick who's who on the legendary creatures from M21. I'm relatively new to the game and don't recognize most of them, but I hear that they're returning characters. Yes. So this is pretty cool. He did a quick rundown. This is a greatly oversimplification of these relationships. <laughs> That's fair, but he's doing this quickly. Baron was Teferi's teacher when he was younger. At the Talarian Academy. Carvec was an evil wizard that Teferi fought against. Mm -hmm. Mangara was a wizard that Teferi teamed up with to fight Carvel after Mangara got rescued. Niambi is Teferi's daughter. Radha fought alongside Teferi. I, Teferi. I think it was during the Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria. Yes. And Subira was Teferi's wife. Yep. So there's a quick rundown of all the main characters in Core 21 around Teferi. Right. Uh, how narrow is the design space for flip cards? Uh, they're not really flip cards. That's Flip cards are the Kamigawa flip cards. I still call they, them flip lands. These are there, DFCs, though. double face cards, DFC. They said flip lands specifically, and that's still what I call them. Too. I really like the Ixalan cycle and look forward to more. Double-faced cards have a lot of design space. <laughs> Doesn't call them out, but he calls them double-faced cards. I a lot of design. He's, he's been quoted many times. He loves There's double There's lots of design space on double-faced cards. I really, I, I know I haven't played with the, some of the other ones as much. I wasn't playing, like, standard when those sets hit, but the Ixalan lands are probably about my favorite double-faced cards, too, because it's just so cool flipping into a powerful land especially because a lot of them were versions of overly powerful lands one of them was essentially a Talarian academy and one yeah. was a gayest cradle and stuff yeah. and yeah being like you can have this old powerful card if you jump through these hoops you gotta like, work for it and i'm like that's cool you that's know cool. yeah i wouldn't mind seeing them do a cycle where they did artifacts like that yeah maybe we get mana vault or mana yeah, something, or something like that yeah. you gotta jump yeah. through some hoop and then it flips over into but it's essentially a very powerful card. You get a mox. I don't know. Yeah. 
I'm in. All right. <laughs> All right, we saved this one for last because we alluded to, if you watched the last episode, yeah, that Mark Rosewater has got to be the most kindest, gentlest, patientest person on the planet when it comes to dealing with trolls. Okay, yeah. and this, this, this right here, this is why. Simple question: Have you ever thought about not being a trash designer? Now, you or I reading that would do one of two things more than likely. We would ignore it if we were a better person and just not go there, as we do some of the comments that y'all will drop. On a, on a, on a good day, that's what I'd do. <laughs> but more than likely, you're going to say something, <laughs> and you're not going to be exactly nice in how you put it. Listen to how somebody, a pro, handles this. You obviously are unhappy with some aspect of design. Why not use this question to express what you are upset about? Insulting me makes you look bad, and it doesn't give me any way to address the core of your issue. What's wrong? He doesn't know. No, yeah. Criticism is one of the things that helps me improve as a designer, and it increases your chances of getting what you yeah. want out of the game. Give constructive criticism, and maybe you get what you want. Also, many people shut down when attacked, making them less likely to listen to you, decreasing your ability to make an impact. So, let's try this again. What about current design are you unhappy with? Now, none of us would have been so kind as to end with asking this person to please respond again. Yeah. <laughs> we would have hoped to never hear from them, more than likely, unless we wanted to get into some kind of flame war or what have you. Very so, eloquent, once again, diplomatic... <laughs> it's it's amazing that he can do that. And we should all be able to because it's a printed thing. I mean, we can just stop. Take a breath. Take a breath. Think about it. <laughs> and be civil to other people. It's not that hard, guys. Even when we haven't been civil to, it doesn't give us cause or excuse to do that. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end. Yep. Uh, we are ready to wrap up. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate week. every one of you watching. Uh, hit us up with some comments yeah. Uh, would you like to see us do something a little different? Do you like any particular thing we're doing? Um, we'd like some feedback. So thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, well, until next time. Well, until <laughs> All right.